Manchester United, and Barcelona. Two historic titans of Europe. 20 English titles and three Champions League trophies for the boys of Manchester. And 26 La Liga titles and five Champions League trophies for Barcelona. Both have a Pokedex worth of legendary players who have graced both sides through the years. A lot of the greatest men in history to ever kick a leather ball have probably played for one of these two sides. So I thought with both teams semi-struggling this season, if you can count second place in the league as struggling, why not take a look back at the glory years and see what would happen if we took all the best players in their primes and smashed them onto their respective teams. Which of these dream squads would come out on top? And a reminder here, there is a little bit of a rivalry between these two historic clubs as they have actually met twice in the Champions League final, once in 2009 and again in 2011. Both times Manchester United were pretty much played off the park by the historically great teams of Messi, Xavi and Iniesta. So if you're a Manchester United fan, like me, you're definitely gonna be looking for a little revenge today. And if you're a smug Barcelona fan, you might get another opportunity to gloat today. For you guys who are unfamiliar, what I'm gonna do is showcase you both of these teams and then put both of them into career mode and sim season to see which one comes out on top there. But the main attraction is going to be the live action match. 11 on 11, CPU on CPU, legendary difficulty, competitor mode on, and that one is truly gonna determine who's the true all-time king of Europe. And if you are excited to go ahead and view all-time Barcelona versus all-time Manchester United, go ahead, take a hard right nipple, smush it into the like button right now. Subscribe if you are new. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let us start it off with my personal favorite team of all time, Manchester United. Now Manchester United has historically been the cream of the crop when it comes to English football. Although, I get it, I get it Liverpool fans, you're right there, you're right there. You guys already know about the class of 92, the likes of Beckham, Scholes, Giggs. And then came the new age team of the 2000s with the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo, Wayne Rooney, Carlos Tevez, all under the watchful eye of Sir Alex Ferguson. Now it's been a hot minute, but yes, Cristiano Ronaldo used to play for Manchester United. It's gonna be crazy that there are probably some kids nowadays who, who don't even remember that. But he was an absolute sensation when he was over at Manchester United. Now he didn't play on the left wing when he played at Manchester United, but I'm just making this team to fit all the best players that I can, all right? Now wingers is gonna be a little bit of a debate here, but I am gonna put George Best, his name literally is the best, but I mean, it's pretty tough when Ryan Giggs can't even get into the side. Most notable because he's one of the few players on here that isn't from the Sir Alex Ferguson era. But uh, yeah, look at the stats. 93 pace, 91 shooting, 94 dribbling. Now, this is gonna be a bit of a controversial pick because he wasn't at Manchester United very long and some fans he <laughs> didn't really enjoy him as a Manchester United player and I acknowledge that he has some very very tough competition here over the likes of Ruud van Nistelrooy who's also 92 rated and then you got Henrik Lars or you can even slot Cristiano Ronaldo in at the striker position and play Ryan Giggs out on the left but simply this Ibrahimovic is his flashback 92 card from a couple of FIFA's ago and it's absurd I just trust him up top a little bit more than Ruud van Nistelrooy so sue me so sue me now behind him in the cam position I opted to go for Wayne Rooney Yes, he didn't play camp for the majority of his career, but you know, during the twilight of his time at Manchester United when he, he lost a little bit of that pace, uh, he did slot back to that camp role. And this of course is his 91 flashback card. Pretty ridiculous, he's got 90 pace, 92 shooting, 91 physical, and 90 dribbling. For the other two midfield positions, I don't think anyone's gonna argue. Paul Scholes, a lot of the great midfielders from his era cite him as the best midfielder of that era. And the other center mid, yes, he spent most of his time playing over the right mid, but we're gonna opt for David Beckham, just cause I wanna get him into the squad and as a midfielder he's, he's not awful he's got almost 70 defending and honestly with that 80 pace he's more suited for uh, playing centrally than he is on the wing, at least in FIFA terms. Backline, for those who watched the Sir Alex Ferguson era, you are very familiar with this one. You got Patrice Ever. This is a recreation of his 87 car from, uh, I think, like FIFA 10. Vintage is a new icon that got added in this year. Of course, he made one of the best partnerships in footballing history with him and Rio Ferdinand back in the day. And then you have Gary Neville, who added an icon card, I think, all the way back in FIFA 17, FIFA 16. Pretty sad card, though. It was only in 86. So. <laughs> then in between the six, you have 92 rated Peter Schmeichel, of course, part of uh, one of the treble winning sides. He barely ekes out uh, Edwin Van der Sar and David De Gea. Now you can see that David De Gea is back up to his 91, which was the peak of his prime. And if you look around at these rosters, you are gonna see that, you know, all these players are updated to when they were in their prime. Logic being, while well, these icons are in their prime, so you probably want, you know, the, the current modern day players in their prime as well. And then of course, looking at the bench, you have names like Bastian Schweinsteiger, Laurent Blanc. Now both of these guys joined at the tail end of their careers and they were, they were pretty much past their prime. Laurent Blanc, I believe Manchester United 
was the final club that he played for before he retired. Ruud van Nistelrooy was an absolute goal scoring machine before Rooney took his mantle. Now curiously you might be asking why isn't Eric Cantona into that starting lineup and it's just it, it's tough it's tough. I don't know if he's quite as dominant as that flashback Ibrahimovic up top. I really like the height on Ibra up there especially with the the free kick delivery of Beckham but Cantona is going to be an excellent super sub. Roy Keane absolutely devastating in that midfield chopped up a couple people's knees. Ryan Giggs you guys know and then you have the modern day player in Bruno Fernandes who's one of probably the best players in the Premier League right now and now look at this a lot of the historically great names that played for Manchester United were kind of flops like Sebastian Veron was very heavily signed but he's kind of cited as one of the biggest flops under the Sir Alex Ferguson era. Henrik Larsson uh, actually one of the few players to play for both Barcelona and Manchester United honestly he played longer for Barcelona but we're gonna put him into the Manchester United side just because uh, when we see the Barcelona side you're gonna see how stacked they are at striker already. Paul Pabuk modern day player and then you got Tellez and Wan Bissaka just for, for depth at the fullback positions. Carlos Tevez was at Manchester United before he moved over to Man City. Wamata joined past his prime, but you know, during those Chelsea days, he was pretty damn good. And then you got modern day Marcus Stratford up at 85. With the all time Manchester United starting lineup coming out to an attack of 93, a mid of 91, and a defense of 87. Yeah. Gary Neville really dragging the team down. But how does it compare to the all time Barcelona squad? Now, I'll be honest, before I made this experiment, I didn't thoroughly go over just how many goddamn icons Barcelona has. Like, you already know the names of the past decade in Lionel Messi, Andres Iniesta, and Xavi. Xavi, a new icon this year, coming out to a 93. This Andres Iniesta is uh, his flashback card, which was a 94 flashback. And honestly, if Xavi is a 93, I think it's fair to assume that Iniesta is gonna be a 94, 93 as well. And then from that era, you also have the likes of Carlos Puyol, who's an absolute club legend. You got Danny Alves, who's so entertaining. And then you start combining that with the historic names that have gone on the side. Obviously, Johan Cruyff is very much beloved by the Catalans. He managed the club for a while and coming in at 94 overall, he's one of the better icons in the game. Ronaldo, aka Fat Ronaldo, played for him for a while, but I mean, he pretty much played for everybody in Europe. His time at Barcelona was very short. He only spent one season from 96 to 97 there, but during that period, in 37 appearances, he scored 34 goals in absolute ridiculous return. <laughs> Nonetheless, I do have Ronaldinho, one of the most entertaining, one of the most marketable players ever to do it. Honestly, we'd probably still be talking about him today if it wasn't for the absolute domination of Lionel Messi. And then you have the likes of Zambrato, who traditionally plays at the right back position, but as you can see, he's played both. And then Ronald Koeman to round out the center backs with the only modern day player, Inter Sagan, in between the sticks. Now, some people might be bitching and moaning, saying, oh, you should put Victor Valdez in there. And was Victor Valdez a good keeper? Yes. Was he an all time great? Not really. Now moving on to the bench, you could see that there is a 97 rated player who's not in the starting lineup. And that of course is Diego Maradona. Maradona actually spent two seasons over at Barcelona that were basically marred by injury. And he never quite returned to form before being sold over to Napoli. Thierry Henry joined the club from Arsenal. He was very good at Barcelona, but he wasn't quite the same player that he was over at Arsenal. Luis Figo, very famous top 10 anime betrayals. He was Mr. Barcelona for a long time. Fans loved him, the club loved him. And it seemed like he loved the club back and then all of a sudden he switched over to Real Madrid. <laughs> and of course you have Pep Guardiola who played for the side. He was a very very uh, solid tidy player in that midfield. A very hyper intelligent player as he's gone on to further demonstrate in his coaching career. Rivaldo a little bit of a forgotten great. You know I wasn't alive to see him play but he was absolutely fantastic before Ronaldinho if you will. Samuel Eto'o was an absolute terror in the early 2000s. One of the quickest players I ever saw play and that is relayed in his stats. 95 pace, 93 shots shooting 90 dribbling yeesh and then of course you have other great names like Cliver, Jordi Alba's in here for depth although he's been one of the better left backs for Barcelona throughout their history of course you have the very famous era of MSN with Messi, Suarez and Neymar some of the most entertaining football that we've seen in the past decade of, uh, probably of all time and this one shocked me I didn't know that Gary Lineker used to play for Barcelona and a very rare English player moving over to La Liga and then you have Deco who joined Barcelona played for about four years there Mark Overmars and Manuel Petit came over from uh, Arsenal Petit did not have a very good time over at uh, Barcelona unfortunately had a lot of injuries and then to round it off there's the flashback Mascherano as well as Sergio Busquets and of course Gerard Piquet who's another player who played for both sides he's in the youth program over at Manchester United but uh, eventually would go back to Barcelona one that got away for Sir Alex Ferguson there with the all-time Barcelona squad coming out to an attack of 93 a midfield of 94 and a defense of 89 and if you compare that to the Manchester United side they're actually tied in attack 
attack. There's three points higher in that midfield and two points higher in defense for the Barcelona squad. God damn it, Gary Devil. But all right, let's go ahead, put both of these teams in career mode and sim up a season to see where they finish. Take it away, time wizard. Alright boys, as you can see, we sit at the end of season in 2021. Let's see how the players did during the season. Go over to player stats and it is Fat Ronaldo, the Brazilian Ronaldo, who comes out on top 23 goals. It is the South Korean Hungman Sun who comes in in second place. And it's not, oh, look at this. As I was saying, as I was saying, Ibrahimovic in fourth place, the highest score for Manchester United. A couple of Manchester City guys on here. And then Ronaldinho in seventh place. And then we keep on going down the list. You have George Best in ninth place. Cristiano Ronaldo in 11th. Luis Figo actually, oh, tied with 16 goals apiece in 10th. And Arsenal has been deleted from the game. Great job, EA. Assists, and I mean, this is probably pretty predictable. Andres Iniesta goes in and wins the golden ball with 10 assists. And then right behind him is Ronaldinho with nine. Don't see a Manchester United player until Ibrahimovic and Cristiano Ronaldo, who's all the way down in uh, eighth and ninth place. The Brazilian Ronaldo right behind them. And then at the bottom of the list, you have the likes of Beckham, Luis Figo, and Bastia Swinesucker getting on here. Going over clean sheets, a little bit unexpected here. Tottenham with... Hugo Lloris gets the most clean sheets. Ter Stegen, respectable third place with 15. Oh, okay. There were multiple Manchester United players uh, on here for the clean sheets. David De Gea got 10. Schmeichel got 9, which would put their total uh, upwards of 19. If I were to predict it, I mean, Barcelona were on top for two of them, so I'm guessing Barcelona won the league. All right, I was Man City. Uh, I came in fourth. Third is Spurs. Barcelona gets beaten down. What? How is that even possible? It's really not that close like they won by six okay six points is is not something that's insurmountable but neither one hit the hundred point mark which i thought would be very viable for them although i guess yeah both of them don't have the best back lines as you can see barcelona allowed 31 goals tottenham hotspur only allowed 26 and manchester united were the best in the league with 24 very very interesting but the the flip side is barcelona scored the most goals and it wasn't even close 91 goals the next closest was manchester united with 79 and they were not that far off of uh, Manchester City. So yeah, you know, the old adage defense wins championships comes through again. It's a little bit of revenge for the Manchester United fans, but Barcelona fans, fret not because you have an opportunity in the live action portion. Let's take it there now. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen, meeting for the third time in the Champions League final, if you will. All-time Manchester United versus all-time Barcelona. Can Manchester United shake off the bugaboo? They've lost twice to Barcelona in the Champions League final. Classic names like Cristiano Ronaldo, Ibra in his prime, George Best, Wayne Rooney in his prime. The back line of Rio Ferdinand and Nemanja Vidic. And my Gary Neville, not, not the greatest. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. And then on the other side, yeah, it's, it's no slouch. Actually, on paper, you probably have to give it to Barcelona. Ronaldo, Ronaldo. Johan Cruyff, and I would say probably the favorites. It's hard to bet against Lionel Messi. Our only hope is that the EA curse on Messi follows through, but I guess we'll see. But the battle of all-time Barcelona versus all-time Manchester United is underway. Rooney making a run ahead. He's got Beckham in front of him. He wants to go for it, but he opts to go back to Ibra. Rooney to Beckham. Lays it off for Rooney! It ain't minutes in! The underdogs in Manchester United are on the board! People kind of forget just how much of a monster young Rooney was. 90 pace, 90 plus shot power, and 90 plus finishing. Sends it hard, low, and true. Ter Stegen nowhere near it. And there we go. Eight minutes in. It's looking kind of good for Manchester. Okay, I'm not going to say anything. It's eight minutes. Up to Ibra. Playing it down the line onto the wing for Georgie Best. Plays it back to Neville. Fires it centrally to Ibra. Does a step over Beckham. He's got a runner. And Rooney. Who's in on net again? Almost an identical goal. It's 2-0 in the 19th minute. Manchester United might be running away from it and that is why i put wayne rooney in ahead of eric Cantona, baby my favorite player paying dividends for the old skipper who needs all the other soul shower pretty much identical running across the face of ronald Koeman. no puyol puyol not the paciest guy remember this is the young flashback rooney who's got 90 pace look at him ugly as ever i love you i love you shrek and 20 minutes in wayne rooney is on a freaking hat trick up against all-time barcelona and let's be honest they got the fire. They got more than enough firepower. The likes of Messi, Johan Cruyff. You're always still in it. Even two goals down. And there's a lot of time left. Johan. Marked here by Skulls, who actually breaks it up, but still to Cruyff. Javi inside of the box. Hounded to Cruyff. Oh, excellent save from Schmeichel. Stay organized, boys. Stay organized. David Beckham marking him. Cruyff now. Marked by Rio Ferdinand inside of the box. Able to get away, but Leo Messi has it. Oh, no. Tries to get it back to Cruyff. Ronaldo is <laughs> unmarked. 
<laughs> Please be offside. No, it's not. Nine minutes after Rooney puts them up 2-0, they're right back in it. Oh, just so many issues. It all starts. Patrice Everett gets turned. Lionel Messi, kind of the catalyst for all of this. And then Rio Ferdinand had a slot over, allowing Johan Cruyff to get the ball. And then he moves it over to the Brazilian. A young, svelte Brazilian Ronaldo. Deadly. Ronaldo. Oh, beautiful death back heel. Gets it past, gets it over to best. The foot race against Zambrata. Checks the run. Oh, beautiful pass inside, Ronaldo! Lovely, decisive counter attacking from Manchester United. The man who's been rather quiet this entirety of the match streaks in. Remember, this is Ronaldo in his prime where he's 91 pace. Gets in behind Puyo, and once again, that lack of pace from, from Mr. Puyo becoming an issue. And lovely take to Sagan, nowhere near. My god. On the verge of halftime, too. A big, big sucker punch for all time Barcelona. But once again, Ronaldinho, Messi, Johan Cruyff, and Brazilian Ronaldo on the outside. More than enough firepower to bring them back and even win this game. Now Barca can come again. Oh. You know, defensively, the midfield for Manchester United has been excellent at breaking up the plate. Ball over the top to Ronaldo. He's trying to get it over to Zlatan. He's in. Oh my god, what a lightning quick counter -deck. And it is 4-1, a slaughter. Revenge for the two lost Champions League finals of old. And look at this sensational. Ibra, unselfish, puts it on the plate for Cristiano Ronaldo. And where were the defenders? Absolutely shattered eviscerated, disintegrated by the men of Manchester. Two goals from Cristiano Ronaldo, two goals from Wayne Rooney. We got two Manchester men on a hat trick. Here we go, first substitution. David Beckham is off for Bastion Swinesucker. Can't be too mad at that, up 4-1. But on the other side, to bring it in the firepower, Diego Maradona in. All right, Barca, throwing everything at the kitchen sink now. Messi, tucking inside. Jorge Niesta, Maradona, Ronaldinho. Right by Gary Neville. The Gordio. Oh my goodness. They are back in. Death little back heel and Maradona. The man who did not honestly have the greatest time over at Barcelona might be their savior. Look at this man. Ronaldinho. Who gives this death little back heel? I think this is Guardiola. Guardiola with the back heel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. Not going to say anything just yet. 15 minutes left. I mean, I'll take this. Yeah, just hold on to possession. It's the 80th minute. Hounded here, though. Oh, Ronaldo <laughs> gets past him, puts it across, forces him to save on Tristegan. It's a penalty! It's a penalty and a yellow card. COVID takes down Cristiano Ronaldo inside of the box. I don't even know who's on pens. And it's going to be Zlatan. He steps up. Oh, he no. chips. <laughs> you asshole, Zlatan. Oh, God damn it. Why'd I put him in? I should have put Rude and All the way back to Schmeichel. No one's pressing Schmeichel. Schmeichel out of the box now. Oh. But he does find it to break the press, and no one is marking Georgie Best. Run, my son. Run through the middle. No one's going to catch him. He's in on net. Georgie Best puts the exclamation point on this match. And finally, redemption for the two Champions League finals lost at the hands of their bitter semi-rivals in Barcelona. And ends this a 5-2 slaughter. Honestly, should have been closer. I don't know what it was. A little bit of Viagra, a little bit of Blue Chew and the morning coffee, but they were hard as stone. And there you guys go. Seven goals. Very cathartic for Manchester United fans. Uh, Barcelona fans, obviously, probably not too happy about this result. And I'm sure if we played this nine more times, Barcelona will probably win the lion's share of them. And who was going to lift this one? Because David Beckham was the captain. He got subbed off. Cristiano Ronaldo, two goals. Wayne Rooney, two goals. Zlatan should have had a goal, but he shipped like an asshole. And Georgie Best to end it off. Nemanja Vidic, okay, I'll take that. He's captained the side many a time for Manchester United. But there we go, the Serbian to lift it up for Manchester United. Lovely, lovely stuff. Was it realistic? Probably not, but felt good. Felt good. Finally, a bit of redemption. But yeah, that is pretty much gonna be it for me from this video. If you did enjoy, go ahead, smush your nipple into the like button, share it with your friends. I'd like to go ahead, take this opportunity to thank all of my patrons, keeping me alive during the global pandemic. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys, thank you guys so much. If you want other content from me, go ahead and click over here, Dinks and Poozies. You want to see the recent of either David Beckham or, uh, you know, uh, the Brazilian Ronaldo. Did a whole career recent for them. Go ahead and check those out. Oh, and I got something a little bit special for you for April Fool's. So keep a lookout for that. Notification squad, be on check. But yeah, stay thick.